Welcome to RDBA's The Morning Fix. My guest today is Jenny Maloney, the Global America's Strategic Account Lead for Bayer Vegetable Seeds. Jenny is responsible for leading strategic accounts through both North and South America and working with those accounts to introduce the full platform of Bayer's fruit and vegetable seeds, as well as the entire crop science portfolio. Jenny, welcome to The Morning Fix. Thanks for having me, Phil. So I know what all RDs want to know. What's the latest and greatest as it relates to, frankly, you know, one of our favorite food groups, produce? Well, um, I've got exciting news to talk about. And I think uh, some people can relate if you have young kids. I'm a mom to a two, four and six year old. And uh, the topic is about flavor and better flavor uh, in your fruits and vegetables. And specifically today, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about um, how we make broccoli taste better and turn broccoli into Brock stars. Well, first of all, I've got to take issue because I love broccoli. I, I'm not one of those people that have a problem with broccoli, but but I'm curious when you say, you know, making it into a star, making it even better than it is now. Broccoli has got to be one of our most nutritious and, and delicious vegetables that are out there. What are you doing? Well, yeah, broccoli has a, a great nutritional profile, vitamin C, uh, fiber, vitamin K, potassium. Uh, but some people don't like the flavor of broccoli and some of the population based upon your genes, actually, um, some people are way more sensitive to the bitterness in broccoli. And uh, some people love it, but there are some people in our society that, that really don't like it. Uh, and there are some traditional ways too that maybe people have cooked broccoli that um, makes it less interesting. But we're doing something really interesting with our broccoli portfolio. We've got a high rise broccoli portfolio and it does a couple of things. Once it, like the name implies, uh, we've got a variety called Eiffel and another variety called Hancock, which as the name implies, it's higher than traditional broccoli. So it's got a lot of benefits. One of them is better flavor. So what makes broccoli have better flavor if it's higher off the ground? So the way that our broccoli grows, it's extruded higher. It's got a little bit more narrow uh, stem and it's less fibrous. So what happens is when the broccoli starts to age, the stem gets more fiber in it. It gets sort of old and the broccoli plant starts putting more of its um, energy and nutrients into the stem. So it gets harder and tougher. I was uh, talking to one of our broccoli breeders and making the comparison between uh, lamb and mutton. You know, when lamb gets old, it, the flavor changes and uh, it, it's less tender. But you can think of the same thing with the long broccoli stem. These varieties come, um, they're harvested earlier. It's a shorter harvest window. And also um, because they're earlier to harvest in this longer stem, you've got less fiber in it. And so the flavor of the stem comes out and it's a much sweeter flavor, almost like a sweet pea. So I would guess um, that when you look at that sweeter flavor, that's a product that your two, four and six year olds would love. Right. As many parents know, getting kids to eat more vegetables in particular, they tend to be harder to meet for me than fruits, getting them to eat more vegetables is, is hard. And broccoli fits into that category that kids don't always say it's their favorite. Last year, when I was in one of our high rise broccoli fields, we were out in the field actually cutting the broccoli compared to more traditional varieties. And so I had this beautiful high rise broccoli that my colleagues couldn't believe I did it, but I put it in a grocery bag with ice and took it on the plane home with me and uh, gave it to my kids. And they loved it. They loved the stems. They uh, loved the florets. Um, I even put out some ranch dressing for them to dip it in and they abstained from the ranch and ate the broccoli uh, directly. So uh, I think if you can impress a four and six year old, you've pretty much got it made. So I want to ask one question, then I want to move to the supermarket. How do these broccoli breeders figure that out? You know, somebody had to have this idea that says, hey, if I grow the broccoli higher, you know, all these things are going to happen. That's got to be a brilliant mind that is well past my pay grade. <laughs> well, this particular uh, these particular varieties in our high rise portfolio, 
they were being worked on 25 years ago, but the initial target was not flavor. The target was to have a higher extruded broccoli that allowed for easier hand harvest and eventually mechanical harvest because anywhere you go right now, um, this isn't just an agriculture issue, but there's a lack of labor. And so we were thinking early on, what can we do to help growers as they're trying to mechanize their harvest? And one thing you can do is raise the broccoli head up. That allows for a machine to come through and either through a a blade or sometimes for lettuce, they'll use a high pressure um, uh, water source to cut the broccoli and lead to mechanized harvest. But even though we don't have ubiquitous mechanized harvest in the U.S., there are some machines that are being used. Uh, Still, when you have uh, hand labor coming through, it makes it much, much easier to go through and cut the broccoli versus the more traditional varieties that sit lower on the ground. Flavor, um, while not an initial target, that was uh, another benefit that came through this uh, breeding process. So our high rise varieties are used, are developed through conventional breeding. Um, and so as they bred to have this more erect uh, broccoli head, they noticed again, less fiber in the broccoli stem itself and a much sweeter tasting uh, broccoli stem. So it ended up being a, a, a dual benefit, a benefit to growers, but then also consumers, whether the stem was going into a slaw or if they were just finding it in their grocery store and using different uh, techniques of cooking to use the stem, which some people just throw it away. So let's head into the grocery store. So you have a focus group, if you would, um, of three, you know, kids. Um, they, they liked it. Um, what else did you do to prove that, you know, this product uh, kids would love and to get, you know, our retail dietitians to taste it for themselves, demo it, put it in their recipes and make it a really kid friendly, you know, resource? Well, we were out in the field, the, the grower of this product, uh, a couple of the bear, my bear colleagues. And we tasted the broccoli in, in the field and said, this is great. What, what can we be doing to introduce this to kids? And immediately we thought of school districts who you know, are one of the biggest restaurants in the United States. I think um, before COVID, uh, you know, schools were serving uh, almost 300 million lunches a day. And so you talk about uh, a demographic that, that's there and getting feedback all the time. So we do a lot of work with the United Fresh Foundation, which is now part of the International Fresh Produce Association. They do a lot of work with school children. We used to, before COVID, uh, do a salad bar donation to a handful of schools every year. During COVID, we had to get a little bit more creative. Uh, salad bars are still not back in vogue uh, with, with uh, concerns about touching things. But one of the things that we said is, Let's partner with some of the local school districts uh, where this grower was growing broccoli and see if we can get some of the school food service directors to try out our broccoli stems, see if, you know, broccoli stems could be the new baby carrot. We were lucky enough to partner with a couple of school districts in the Monterey, California area and harvested our broccoli. Our grower donated all the broccoli to the school that week. And one of the teachers volunteered his time and did a mini uh, kitchen out during lunchtime out on the blacktop, sauteed our broccoli, cut the stems into what I call coins or stars. We call them Brock stars, sauteed the broccoli, uh, talked about our varieties, how they grow. And if you look at some of the pictures, uh, they were served on paper plates uh, and every single paper plate that was put into the trash can was virtually lit clean. So we had students that came back for seconds, thirds, fourths, and even fifths to eat more broccoli stems. So I would say uh, it is hard to impress elementary school kids. And by the showing of the the clear paper plates that uh, that it was uh, the rock stars were hit. 
Absolutely. It, it sounds fabulous. And also, again, bringing it into uh, the supermarket, you know, where today retail dietitians are doing more recipes, doing more cook-alongs, uh, doing more kids programs than ever before. Um, this sounds like a, a perfect product for them to use and to do more with than just sauteing. Right. And, you know, as a, as a parent, when you're moving through the grocery store, you know, especially with, you know, whether you're, you're working out of the house or inside the house, everyone's lives are busy. And so they're always looking for tips and tricks to, you know, to cook or present fruits and vegetables differently. And as we all know, um, our entire population isn't eating enough fruits and vegetables. And with vegetables, it's, it can be hard to make them interesting for kids. So I think that we rely a lot on in-store demos on retail dietitians to help, you know, give us some tricks to use when we get back home. And, you know, broccoli stems are one of those areas where whether you slice them up into stars, coins, or cut them into sticks like uh, celery sticks or carrot sticks, it's easy to do. Uh, kids really like them. And, and again, especially when they have that sweeter flavor, um, they can, I, I think, really win their way into kids' hearts. And it's another use, too, for the, the entire broccoli that you buy, not just using the head of the broccoli, but using the stem as well. So, Jenny, for, you know, our members, our retail dietitians who want to taste it, who want to try it, who want to demo it, tell us more. I mean, is this product available 12 months a year? How would they go about reaching out, getting samples uh, to experiment with? Sure. So this is a newer variety. Uh, it's primarily in the United States, primarily grown in California. In the Salinas area, it's grown usually available May through October, but south of there and more like the Santa Maria area, they, there are companies who grow it year round. Um, it is available in, in certain grocery stores and we can at Bear always direct you to a grower or a distributor who's um, either growing the product or distributing the product from the grower. So we usually have a grower that is growing it mostly year round. But if this is something that a retail dietitian um, tries and likes, I would tell them, ask your distributor to you know, purchase more of high rise broccoli varieties. The more demand that we get from grocery retail, um, the more growers will plant. So uh, while it's not branded yet in the grocery store to say high rise, you can typically tell from the longer sort of skinnier stems, they'll sometimes bunch them in three. Um, sometimes they're put into florets too. But if you taste something you like or you get feedback from your customers, ask, your, ask the company that you're buying for to grow more of it. Because our, our growers, for them, this variety has several benefits in field. There's some sustainability benefits, some labor benefits. They just need the signal to grow more. So Jenny, I want you to pull back and, and give me the holistic view. Uh, look in your bare vegetable seeds crystal ball. What else besides the high rise broccoli should we be watching out for? Well, you can look for uh, better tasting tomatoes. So new tomatoes on the vine, new colored tomatoes, snacking tomatoes. While I do like to eat my fruits and vegetables, I was very pleasantly surprised to know that a lot of our beefsteak tomatoes go into uh, in and out cheeseburgers if you order them with tomatoes. So uh, if you're a West Coaster, you know about in and out uh, We have um, some really new fantastic snacking uh, pepper varieties. So the mini peppers that you'll see at certain grocery stores, um, that's in our portfolio. We've got uh, in the summertime, amazing sweet corn. Uh, some growers grow that year round as well, depending on what location. We've got um, some great tasting melons out in the market and uh, really uh, cucumbers, uh, squash, uh, several different lettuce varieties. So really a robust portfolio in the vegetable space. Well, Jenny, thanks for all the good work. Thanks for the tips and tricks and looking forward to, I love those mini peppers. I love those um, as well as the snacking tomatoes. So I'm looking forward to having some of those mini peppers for dinner tonight. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, those are a, those are a crowd favorite at our house too. And, uh, 
I'm uh, I'm one of those people now that goes into the produce department and searches around and see what's see what's new and what's coming up. And so I think uh, be on the lookout for more varieties coming out from the bare vegetable seed division that have a focus on flavor.